and happy Tuesday, Bells and Bows. I am Heather Marcigliano from Grace on Broadway in Bangor, Pennsylvania. I apologize so much that we're late this morning. I literally came flying in, hot off the press of my car, and sat down. And Margaret really did me a solid and got everything set up and ready for us because today is my baby's birthday. He's nine. Can you believe how fast that goes, Margaret? Way too fast. So stupid, right? Very stupid. It really, it, it didn't make me sad when they went from like two months to four months overnight. And it didn't even make me sad when they turned one or two. But these years, it really hurts my feelings because they're fun now. And they're like my friends. And you could see them getting so big and realize that there's only so many years left before we're not cool anymore. So now it's starting to hurt my feelings. It's starting to catch up. Um, so we had like birthday breakfast and, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm sorry, I'm 10 minutes late. And so what we're gonna do, if you guys are new this morning to this series, I try to take one piece and we work it all the way through. Sometimes we do smaller lessons on Tuesday mornings, but for the past, I don't know, since the summer, we've really actually had some pretty solid projects that we saw all the way through. We had to take the mirror off and I'll be doing that off camera because mirrors are really tricky live because of reflections and it's humongous. So we didn't want it to fall on us. So I'll be finishing that one this afternoon. This is a vanity that we've been working on for a couple weeks. It has aubergine down to caviar and we added would you bend cogs and gears and a butterfly. And as you will have it, we had it here and we had this really great festival this weekend and it was so much fun, but it was out. So we got some extra dust and dings. So we're gonna wipe that back. We're gonna seal it up. And I asked Ed, we got the hardware. And I said to my husband, Ed, can you do me a favor since you are super straight and super good with measurements, can you create the hardware holes for me? because I know I can do it, I'm more than capable, but I feel like you would just get the line straight the first time. And he was like, oh yeah, sure, I could totally do that. I'd be awesome at that. And then I hear, oh man, that's a bad sound, girls. No one wants to hear, oh man. And I said, what? He's like, oh, I screwed up. And I was like, are you serious? And I thought he was totally kidding with me. And he goes, I know, I know, you could have screwed up all by yourself. You didn't need me to screw it up for you. And he wasn't kidding, not even a little bit. So now I have extra hardware holes on an almost finished piece. So we put a bunch of mud on it and had it set and sanded it back. There's some mud scuff marks and we're gonna have to repaint a little bit. So we're gonna do that first. And then while that's setting and drying, we'll go over and finish the rest of it. So things happen. This is real life, right? This is what happens in my shop. Our store is an open working store. You can always come in. It's not, and all this stuff happens. So, and then also when I paint with things in it, sometimes I get like paint on the side. So these are all things that we do to finish a piece is well, I'll get this nice and cleaned off. We sometimes put Big Mom, Mama's Butter on the tracks. We do a lot of like finishing touches. So this is a super fine sanding pad. And I'm just going to sand back some of this to make sure that when he sanded it for me, he got it even. We filled his accident holes with brown mud by Dixie Bow. And I tried. I think he has a personal vendetta with this set. Because the last one, remember, if you guys were with me, he broke that one's foot. And then I had to fix it. And now this time, he accidentally, maybe on purpose. Accidentally, maybe on purpose. Accidentally, maybe on purpose. You need the quote marks. Accidentally. Yes, he accidentally <laughs> gave me really bad harbor holes. <laughs> so 
Oh, we're just gonna wipe back the dust. Oh my goodness. So, how is everyone today? This is my Mr. Bottle. I'm just extra misting. <clears throat> so that it's damp but not soaking wet. And then it'll help us just pull back all this dust. Dew says because it's purple. She says accident because it's purple. So, here's a fun thing. I was talking to Dew last night. As a lot of you guys know already, Dew is one of my fellow instructors on the Bells and Bow Tour and one of my very good friends. And Dew hates the color purple. Like, hates it. I like purple, so I told her last night that I'm going to be such a good friend that every time I give her a gift from now on, I'm going to make it purple so that she eventually learns to embrace the color. And then she giggled and said that I am a jerk enough to do that to her. But, so, I really wouldn't do that to her. I like her too much. But it was really funny last mm -hmm. night. I was like, I'm going to buy you everything purple. Purple everything for you. Like my trick to get my jars open when I closed them horribly. So this is just on our aubergine section. Thank goodness it's not where we blended it. So it should be a pretty easy fix. We're just gonna go do. <laughs> do says, oh great, now I'm gonna get haters. <laughs> Why don't you like purple, do? And also what color purple in Dixie Belle are you using? This is aubergine. Okay. And the whole piece is aubergine into caviar. Do you won't get haters. You're too nice for haters. They might tell me to buy you the purple stuff, though. They might think that's funny. But I don't think they're going to hate you. Um, there's a little bit, it looks like, going into the black right at the edge of where I fixed it. So what I'm going to do is, this is still wet with aubergine. I'm just going to really cheat my way through and just get a little bit of the caviar now on the same exact brush. And I'm just gonna go right into that line. So I have a super weird glare. Our lights are awesome, but they're a little too awesome. Oh, are they being weird? Well, yeah, so and it's wet and it's, you know. So we're just gonna quick pull that through. Hopefully when it dries, I'm trying. Oh, there we go. All works out. That's a better angle. And when it dries, if it doesn't work out, then I'll be talking to Ed tonight. If I have to redo this whole stinking drawer, there's going to be problems, ladies. No, there won't. He was trying to help me. He was being nice. He was trying to be super supportive and nice and help me with my project. Okay, I think that's good. Woo, so shiny. It's even shiny for me with these lights. Okay. So, that should be fine. Is that better? Yeah, I actually, I got it, like, moving. Yeah, there, that's better. Okay. <clears throat> so, we're going to let that dry. All the way over here. Michelle would like to know where you got the Mr. Bottles. So... Um, I got this Mr. Bottle, I don't remember where, but now I have Dixie Bell ones and they're the same exact thing. And your local retailers can sell them, so ask them if they have them. If they don't have them, they can probably drop ship them to you. The difference between, I don't even have a regular spray gun anymore, but your regular water sprayer is going to really like shoot water out and it's going to shoot way too much water. So you're not going to have the same control. And these bottles... You hit it, and then it's just like a fine mist. So, a mister bottle really does make a difference. So now, there is so much dust on this piece from the weekend. So we're just going to literally mist it real quick and wipe it back. I'm not going to use cleaning products. I'm not going to go scrub it. We're just going to clean it back. Because it's dark, I'm going to use a t-shirt rag so that there's no lint. And I'm just going to wipe off any of the dust from all the people being in my shop this weekend. 
getting your piece clean before you do any of the next steps is always important, whether your next step is painting, whether your next step is sealing. Even if all you did was sand it, there's sanding dust, you want to keep your piece clean. Especially dark, a lot of times people say they have problems sealing and working with dark colors because there's white flecks and this and that that show up. Those white flecks are not white flecks from your paint. Most of the time, they're white flecks from leftover sanding dust or something in the air. So, it always pays to just take a second and wipe it back. You don't have to wipe it back completely perfect, but wipe back your piece. Make sure you're all good before you start. And Margaret kind of called it. She knew someone was going to do something funky when we leave pieces out here during festivals. <laughs> it happens every single time. One time a piece got a watermark on it. That was great. That was cool. They put their, their drink down. It had this like random tiny little scratch there. I'm going to see if I can sand it out real quick. Um, another simple answer obviously seems to be like, Heather, well then put your stuff away before the festival, right? Well, here's the truth. Our store is like four inches big for anyone who has ever been here. And our back room is about one inch big and it is now being taken over by boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes for the Bells and Bow Tour, which is happening in three weeks. Well, really like the end of the second week. So it is, it is getting here. Some of my white came up. I think I like it a little bit, like just a smidge. Okay. So now this is where we're at. We're mostly clean. We're dry. We're good. Do we want to add anything more to the highlight spots? The only other thing I have that we can maybe add that we didn't yet would be like a super subtle dry brush of steel magnolia. We added a fun, I mixed up silver bullet and aubergine for here. And I dry brushed that all the way around everywhere. Are you laughing at my I, It still won't open. I'm amazed that it's still closed. <laughs> That's all. Ta-da. One of these days I'm going to do that on camera and it's going to like... It sounded like it cracked. I was I was waiting. You were worried? I was. Is that why you were giggling? I was giggling because I, like, I just felt like something was going to happen. You were like, she is going to get this all over. It's going to continue to be I was like, wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's like add like a tiny bit of dry brushing of Steel Magnolia. I just like this color. And I think it's just different enough to add like one more teeny tiny layer. So... This is my Dixie Belle angle brush. I put like the tiniest smidge on here and I'm gonna just pounce it off even. And I'll do this just a couple times. So it's on there, but not really. And then we're just gonna get the high notes again. Oh yeah, see that brings the color up just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And let's get to on the ears just a little bit. I don't want a lot, just enough to make them a smidge more prominent. Oh, that one ended up like this. And they don't all have to be the same because they're different gears. These gears I painted before I put them on. And Heather, for anybody that missed the first session that you did, uh -huh. um, what did you use paint-wise? Aubergine, caviar, a mix of aubergine and silver bullet. Then these are black uh, caviar with aubergine.
Aubergine, Silver Bullet, and now Steel Magnolia. Oh, thanks, Dixie Belle. They answered too, like right at the same time. They're so good. That was awesome. Don't gaze up too much. The lips might get back a smidge. I love paper towels. I always have them handy. And baby wipes too are great. They just kind of help. And then that's purple. Oh, here's more gears. Gears everywhere. My gears are from Would You Bend. They are an applique that once heated can be mended. So as you can see, this is a rounded slope, but my gear goes right around it. And we're gonna shine up our butterfly a little bit more. Some pieces I fuss with them more than others, and this is definitely a fussy piece. You do a little bit of it, and then you step back and you stare at it for a little bit, and then you just keep adding to it until it's right where you want it. So, I didn't get enough off my brush. So, we're just going to wipe that back. Sometimes that happens. Oh, yeah, look how bright that is now. Yeah, you could see because you were sitting in the middle. So you yeah. could see one side not done, the other side done. Yeah. Oh, really? So it was, like yeah. Green yeah. Cool. Yep. You cool. could see the big difference. So for anybody that didn't get to see, um, actually, Dixie Bell just answered me. Thank you, Dixie Bell. Well, I want to um, know. Yeah, the question was Did you um, mix aubergine and caviar? Yeah. <laughs> it was a blend. It was a blend. Yeah. I blended down to it. Aubergine and then blend it into caviar to get to the bottom. Oh, that is pretty. That's so bright now. Now I, oh, there's more gears. <laughs> and you should be able to get these gears, even though they're Would You Bend, from your Dixie Bell retailer soon. Because Dixie Bell is going to be carrying some of these. I know I just ordered them for our shop yesterday. So. They should be getting in pretty soon. All right, so I am officially happy with this. This is how I want it to look. The mirror is this huge round mirror, and it has some of these on it, so we'll just have it all matched out. We have the bottom is caviar, and the top is aubergine. And it'll sit there. And then I ordered, we ordered it, right? The glass? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We got the smoke colored, right? No, that you didn't order yet because you didn't. They didn't get back to us to tell us if they had it available oh. or not. We are going to try to order. <laughs> the little glass was ordered for yeah. the mirror. All right, we have a, a glass store right down the street from us, and we have them cut us pieces when we don't like it. So what was in here was this really weird colored. It was amber. It was, it was like a amber, pinkish but amber. It was like yeah. Mirror. Yeah. It wasn't just glass. It was so. It, it would not go with this at all. It was old and scratched, so I'm going to try to either get a piece of straight mirror cut, or I really would like smoked glass, like a like a pretty black glass. And so that they can see for. what you're talking about. It's yeah, actually open hole. on the inside. Boop. So this piece, I want to be black. So we're going to, after we, today, if you don't see the pictures for a week or two, that's why I'm waiting for this insert to come in. I'm not withholding pictures, I promise. Sometimes the finishing touches are out of my control. Okay, so now this is Dixie Belle's Besting Wax in Black. So as you can see, we have done no clear wax. 
So sometimes I will take a colored wax and just use it. I do not always use clear wax first. This is one of the pieces where I think black wax will add a fun depth because it will put more color to it. And I can actually use it to shade and do some stuff. This is so big, you do not need a t-shirt rag this huge when you're waxing. Some people wax with brushes. I do a lot of stuff with rags. Rags are about my favorite thing. We go through a lot of them. When they're humongous, I don't think you have as much control and you have like all this extra fabric hanging. That's no fun. So I kind of wrap it around where I have my finger for control and I put just a bit, not a ton. And I guess the easiest place for me to start with you guys would be this center strip. So we're going to put it on. Stick it all the way in that corner. And we're going to just work it in. And I know there's a lot of girls out there that are scared of using colored wax right on paint, but don't be. I've done this live before and I always get comments like, you're so crazy or <laughs> you're my hero, but it's really not scary, I promise. You just have to do it once. And if you are a little worried, you can start with a darker color. Like I wouldn't start with like fluff and black wax, you know what I mean? Although that could be so cool. but there's nothing to be scared about. And see, it just adds this like really nice, I don't know, can you see it on camera? It's almost like the further away I am, you can see it. It's funny because it looks like a shadow, but it is not. It right, is the wax. Like all this is like just <clears throat> yeah, really that nice. That is the wax that you're of, seeing on the top there. That's just, it's a nice, just not a graining, but it kind of adds this really like pretty a dimension. highlight, yeah. Yeah. It's, and then it's going to make our black blacker if that's even possible, because caviar is genuinely a very true black tone. And Dew says, and if you don't like it, you can always paint over it. Sure you can. Sure can. Dew would paint over this whole piece because it's purple. She said it was stunning. She did say she, she did. and she, she liked did. It, it she did. She did say she liked aubergine also. All right. So it sounds like aubergine is the exception. It's the exception to Dew's purple rule. Maybe it's those light purples, like periwinkles and... Yeah, we're going to have to get her to define the purple rule. So if you're taking Judith's class, the reason I now know she just likes purple is I had to order... I ordered... I'm giving away secrets now, so... <laughs> <laughs> I ordered... You're going to get, like, a really fun notebook with, like, a pen. And so that you can take notes, like, in her class and as you go through the conference and... As you get to like meet friends, like you just, you'll have a pad and a pen. And I thought that the, the purple notebooks were so cute. So I ordered them for her and I told her, I was like, guess what? I got you purple notebooks. And they're purple too. Yeah. And that's how I found out that, but what do also told me is red is she doesn't like red even more. And she doesn't like purple. She's not going to tell me things anymore after today's live. I'm done. I'm done with secrets. Maybe she'll start telling you colors that she secretly loves, but says she hates them. And then you'll start giving her stuff in that color. Yeah, she'll be like... Even though she knows it's her favorite. She'll be like, I can't stand purple, Heather, or <clears throat> it's blue. But this is fun. Like, everybody's color palettes are so different, you know? Like, what's your favorite color, Margaret? And what's your hated color? Not hate, I hate the word hate. What's your, like, most disliked color? My most disliked? Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Um, I, truthfully, I like a lot of colors. I really do, but, and there are certain colors that I'm drawn to. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm drawn to purple, but I don't want it in my house or on my body. 
if that mm -hmm. makes sense for like textiles or furniture. Mm -hmm. But I, I like the color. Okay. Um, so I'm like that with a lot of colors. Like I'm drawn to them, but I can't, I just don't Something want like them. I, I don't want to look at them all the time. Okay. So I can't really say there is anything that I genuinely don't like. Periwinkle, I guess, is pretty close. That's that's a good one that I really don't like. You're not a huge fan of periwinkle? No. I like darker colors. Like the moody kind mm -hmm. of thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jewel tones, richer. So what I did, as you guys are watching and we're chatting about colors, is because this is already caviar, I kind of started there, and then I'm working my wax up. So there still is wax up here, but I started the concentration of it on the spot that was already caviar. And it's just buffing out all over. And... Do said, see, I'm not the only one. No, you're not, Do. You're never alone. a nice aged look without us having to distress it and get down because when I'm a big fan of distressed looks it's just kind of part of what I do um and this piece needed slick stick and we didn't know what color we were going to do it so we didn't tint the slick stick so as you can see when we come down there's white and I tried to distress it and see what it would look like with all the white coming through and I didn't like it so this is giving us a nice aged look without having to actually go all the way down and age it. And that makes me super happy because I like that look. So as you can see, here's the two doors. So it made the black blacker somehow because now we have two layers of black in the same spot, which also then helps the butterfly stand out even more. And then we're gonna go ahead and do this side. And it also just kind of helps give some aging and shadowing to the door. And again, we didn't use clear wax first. We just went straight on with the black wax. But I actually think I wanna get over here and do that door next, only because it seems like I could reach it better. So, you guys might not see this corner as much. But I think it's important for it's here to be right. dark too, because that's like the shadow of it, right? So when you look at it, okay. that should be a sort shadow. See it. This yeah. should be a shadow. So we want to make sure that we, we're going to go over the entire piece by the time it's done and seal it up good. And no, I am not going to put gator hide or anything over my wax. You certainly, I, you can. Um, I don't ever double seal stuff because I don't think there's a need to. And I think the more product you put on a piece, the more time it's going to take you and the more it's going to cost you. And most of us are doing this either to save a, a piece and make it like a cheap redo for our house right? Or we're doing it because we're hoping to sell it. So the more we add to it and the more work we put into it, um, sometimes is counterproductive. So if a sealer is going to seal and make it look cool, especially because Dixie Belle paint self cures and doesn't really need a sealer, then why add a third sealer, right? Like, so unless it's a tabletop, I don't go crazy. Everything is sealed, everything's gonna stay put, but we don't need to add layers and layers of sealer. Just like I only also use slick stick and boss when absolutely necessary. They're amazing problem solvers that Dixie Belt gave us and created for us, but they do not need to be used on every single piece. Only when it's super duper necessary. Here we go. 
it's going to get nice and shiny. But not too shiny. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions while we're doing this part? Because it's really just waxing. There's not so much for me to tell you about other than really watching what I'm doing. So I feel bad that I don't have too much instructional stuff to go along with it. You're just kind of rubbing it on and buffing it as you go, really. I think it's one of the more user-friendly top coats, especially the clear. So when I have someone come in the shop who's never painted before ever, clear wax is usually what I'll suggest they start with because of how user-friendly it really is. I'm going to try and get in for a little bit closer. Hopefully that'll work. Yeah, well, we're going black on black. Yeah, so. it's kind of hard. Well, you can see here, yeah. that's not done. Yep. That's done. You can done. see the before and the after. That's not and done. And on the doors, too. You yeah, can see it. Yeah, that's done. That's not done. That's done. So you could see um, okay. kind of if you're looking at it that way. So we do have a couple questions. Sure. Um, Linda would like to know, do you prefer a dust-free cloth instead of a wax brush? Well, yeah. So this is um, my t-shirt rag. So it's a dust-free, lint-free cloth. Um, that would be really important. You don't want to have a cloth that has dust or lint on it because then as you're waxing, all of it's going to get into it and you're going to have a heart attack, especially in a dark piece because you're going to have all those spots and speckles and weird stuff. And also, do you go back and buff the entire piece when you're done waxing? I kind of buff it as I wax, which is what you'll see. Like, you'll see me go over and over the same spot, and then by the time I'm done, it's, it's pretty good and done. But I don't get out, like, a sanding buffer or anything like that. Um, and I don't use, I use wax brushes and stuff if I'm like painting with wax. Like if I'm just using it for like accent corners and stuff like that. But even then sometimes I just use a rag because I like to wrap the rag around my finger even then. And then I'm almost like finger painting with it. And I just feel like I have more control if I'm using my own fingertip instead of a brush. But I think a lot of people see dark colors and how do I do that? So caviar paint with black wax gets you the deepest black ever, every single time. I'm just trying to buff these little edges out. All right, so Marianne has a question, but it's a little broken up because it won't let her type her and spell the way she wants to. So I'm going to try and try assume what she means. Oh boy. If you, well, I, I think you it's think kind of obvious. It? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she says, if you use a wax as the uh -huh. sealer and sell your piece, how does the person, what I'm guessing is, how does the person either take care of it or, you know, because sometimes wax does need to be rewaxed. Yeah, but so, so I think here's that's thing, where she's too. going with it. I did my kitchen cabinets, and this is oh, my... That's the exact question. How do they wax it again? So, I did my kitchen cabinets five years ago now, and as a shoemaker will, right, I ran out of time, and I said, these are my cabinets. I'm going to live here forever. I need to do stuff at the store. I'll come back in two weeks and finish them. Well, guess what? No, I didn't. They got rehung. My cabinets have never been sanded soft, which drives me crazy. There's like three that I got to sand. But better than that, they never got sealed with 
anything, nothing, and they are drop cloth. And I have an 11 year old little boy. I have a now nine year old little boy. I have a three year old puppy. I have a husband. I have all of my husband's friends who come over and ride dirt bikes and fix cars and fix motors and then come in my house and touch stuff to get drinks. And because it's my house, I grab whatever cleaner is there and I spray them and I wipe them and I move on. And I can honestly tell you, I'm so excited that I've never sealed them because it has been the true test of the fact that Dixie Belle does self care. I do not have a single speck missing from those cabinets. So I feel a hundred percent sure standing behind Dixie Bell's products, no matter what, because I feel like the sealer is, yes, it's a sealer. Yes, it adds a layer of protection. It makes everybody happy. But the paint itself self cures and I know it and I trust it. Um, and that's it. And I mean, no matter what furniture you have, I don't care how much wax you put on it. I don't care how much gator hide you put on it. I don't care how much anything you put on it. Everything can be scratched at some point. Um, everything can be ruined. Everything can be mistaken care of. Uh, you can't help that as a seller or as a creator if a person goes home and like gouges a table. I mean, it can happen no matter what you do. But realistically, Dixie Belle paint 100% stands up to my family with no sealer. <laughs> and I feel like if it can stand up to my family with no sealer, it will be perfectly fine with wax going home with someone. So hopefully that answered the question, um, or at least my take on the question. So we are just about out of time. I will just do this, super, this door super quick so you guys can kind of see this section. And then I will go about the rest of my crazy day. We are getting 10 boxes of Redesign with Prima delivered today for the New Jersey Bells and Bow Tour. So the next couple weeks, we are gonna be starting to pack and sort and prepare for that. Um, if you guys haven't heard about it or haven't gotten your tickets, that is on November the 3rd in Edison, New Jersey. And it's gonna be myself, Pam Haskins, Drew Dodson, Brandy Cullenborn, Dustin Van Fleet, and Fiona DeBell. And we will all be there teaching you guys stuff from 7.30 in the morning until six o'clock at night. There's six classes, five take-home projects, a huge stuffed full swag bag. We keep getting swag bag stuff every time I turn around. We have great sponsors. There's gonna be cash and carry options. We're gonna be feeding you lunch, snacks in the morning, snacks in the afternoon. It's gonna be a really good time and there's still some tickets left. And even if you don't live close, you can travel in. Most of us are traveling in. I'm the closest one, but everyone else is getting all the way here. We have a couple girls coming from Canada. We have a girl coming from Texas. A couple girls from Michigan coming in. It's gonna be a good time. We're all gonna hang out and just have fun. We're gonna learn, we're gonna network, we're gonna, we're gonna do that thing all the time. All right. The other thing is I have the hardware on now. Usually the hardware is not on until very, very last, but because my husband was here, I asked him to help me. And instead of just making the holes, he put the hardware on, which is so helpful, right? So helpful, we love when they help. Um, but we're just working around it instead of taking it all off and then putting it all back on. But off camera, I might end up pulling it off if it continues to get on my nerves. We'll see. Cause like right there is my fingerprint and that's not going to work for me. All right. I got it. All right. So quick lesson in black wax and how to fix stuff when you leave it out and people touch it. And when your husband makes extra holes, you put mud on. 
and then sand it and then repaint it. So a whole bunch of stuff squeezed into today. We are going to work to get this finished and get this piece in and we will post it the second it's done on Grace on Broadway. Next Tuesday, I won't be live because I also have to take said husband to a doctor's appointment because he made it on a Tuesday morning because he's so, so, so helpful. Um, no, it was the only day the doctor had, so I mean, it's important, so we have to go. Um, so I won't be here next Tuesday, but I will be here the following Tuesday and, and Tuesdays forever. So we will see you every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m., except for a quick break next week. So maybe next Tuesday, if we get the glass, it can be our, our debut picture instead. We'll see. We'll see if we can make that happen. All right, guys, have a really fantastic Tuesday and go paint something.